Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Teach Me in 10. This is, of course, the Technology Network's video series where we interview experts and they give you their answers in less than 10 minutes, making four brilliant bite sized episodes. In today's episode, I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Derek Matten, a subject matter expert at Perkin Elmer. And I should think the title already gave this away, but we'll be chatting all about analysing complex compounds such as PFAS, pesticides and mycotoxins. And before we go any further, I'm very excited to tell you that this episode is kindly brought to you by Perkin Elmer, who have partnered with laboratories around the world to enable and accelerate science for over 85 years. Driven by innovation, dedication, and an unwavering commitment to their customers, the global community, and Perkin Elmer teams, the central aim remains focused on creating a positive impact for the better. To learn more about Perkin Elmer, you can click the links that we've left in the description. But without further ado, you're about to watch this incredible Teach Me in 10 in full. Hi, Derek. How are you doing? Hey, Lucy. No, I'm doing really great. Thank you. Perfect. And as we only have 10 minutes on the clock, we best get started. So to dive right on in, when we talk about complex matrices, what does that mean? Yeah, so it's a great question. I think it's it's a good question, but it's also a difficult question because this is a very, let's say, vague general statement because this can this can uh, encounter or it can deal with any type of sample types, for example, that different labs can can come across. That could be, for example, food, which is known to be quite a dirty soil, uh, uh, quite a dirty matrix, but it could also can be from the environmental perspective, such as soil. It could be wastewater, packaging. It could literally be anything. For example, some labs would even consider some drinking water samples uh, complex matrices just because of how hard or soft the water could be. So it is a really good question, and I think it's something that that is being addressed and uh, is is a big challenge that many labs are facing. Mm-hmm. And then what are the challenges using LCMS or MS for complex matrices? So yeah, um, so when you look at it from a lab's perspective, they have, let's say, two things that they're looking at when they're dealing with complex matrices. One in particular is the sample prep because it needs to be really well because you're trying to protect, let's say, going to the next step, which is the instrumentation. Uh, part of your analysis. So one thing that that uh, let's say manufacturers or people that are working in labs are trying to do is essentially save time, save money, but also focusing on the different aspects so the sample prep and the instrument side. And so what what we're addressing, let's say from Perkin Elmer's perspective, is we're developing a solution which we call the the Q site, which is our triple quad technology which can overcome and surpass, and surpass this complex matrix issue that labs encounter on a day-to-day basis. And what I, will t- and what I want to talk about here and in the next 10 minutes is just the, the technology that we're using and how that is applied into different settings in different laboratories, which is based on our patented stay clean technology. Wonderful. And then, so what would you say are the solutions a lab a lab can adopt to overcome these challenges? And also, I think it'd be great if you could briefly explain explain why the QSite is able to overcome tough matrix samples too. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned in the, in the last question, it's really important to focus on one or the other. And what we're trying to do from an instrument perspective, while we're talking about uh, our instrument, the QSite, is to let's say possibly reduce the amount of sample prep to make it, let's say, more economical for the customer because our instrument is able to take on such complex matrices, such as different food matrices or different other environmental matrices. And this is where I want to introduce our Stay Clean technology. And one aspect of our Stay Clean technology is our HSID interface, which stands for Hot Surface Induced Desolvation Interface, which essentially uses hot surfaces and hot gases to transport the ions from atmospheric pressure to vacuum, essentially keeping the instrument completely clean and maintenance free so that you don't have that downtime that is usually encountered when uh, tough matrices or or tough samples are being introduced into the system. And different applications that could be benefited or let's say different applications that could that cover this particular aspect could be for example pesticides or even mycotoxins in foods or which is a hot topic in today's world is PFAS in different sample types 
and it could be from food, it could be also to drinking water, wastewater, just to name a few. Wonderful. And then, as you've mentioned PFAS, it would be great if you could explain how the QSight technology can be applied to PFAS analysis. Yeah, so um, with our QSight and the technology that I mentioned before with our Stay Clean technology, um, it does, of course, fit to, let's say, let's not so complex matrices such as drinking water, but as I mentioned, drinking water can be complex depending on how you look at it. But with the different regulations being introduced from the different from different uh, governments to different uh, countries at different on different levels on a global scale, um, the the amount of PFAS and the popularity, let's say, of PFAS is ever growing. And what we're doing at Perkin Elmer is trying to to deliver finished solutions, which means finished methods to guide customers to to get to where they need to be from a regulation perspective to meet the, the strict criteria that is necessary in analyzing these tough tough samples, which tend to um, um, fit well to our design because of the stay clean technology and the um, ever presence of for example, there's a new regulation coming out um, in the U.S., which is called EPA 1633, which is covering not only uh, water or wastewater samples, but also food samples. So the, the matrices are only getting tougher and the regulations are getting even stricter. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so we've talked about contaminations and cleaning, but what about compliance? Yeah, so another aspect, again, touching on not just on PFAS, but other, let's say, uh, compounds or chemicals that are being um, covered with different regulations. Um, what we like to do is we create, at Perkin Elmer, we, we create different app notes that are made to fit for purpose. So they're fitting to specific regulations from different parts of the world that meet those criteria that give the customer a finished solution to be able to say, hey, we're a, a lab and we can, we can uh, measure the samples and, and get you up to regulations. Um, and I don't want to just speak about just the application notes that we've developed, but also my colleague, Mark Ellie, uh, also gave a, a, one, of, uh, one of these 10 minute videos mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago where he uh, stressed the importance from a PFAS perspective and how to mitigate different interferences and contaminations related to PFAS. So if you, if you also would like to check out that, that'd be also really great. Wonderful. And I'd be interested in knowing if you have any other examples of showing the advantages of the QSite Stay Clean technology. Yeah, so that's also a great question. And what I like to, to, to let's say, cover in this aspect is giving a real life example or let's say a customer testimonial. And what we what we've learned from one of our one of our customers is that um, so I give you, before I go into, let's say, a little bit of uh, details on the method itself, I'll give you a little details on the customer itself. Mm -hmm. So the name of the customer is FBA Laboratories, and they're actually a high-throughput lab. And they came to us because they needed a solution um, to cover uh, a new customer that they actually um, were dealing with. And this was dealing with disinfectants in milk. They were getting about 20,000 samples a year, they had, they had uh, figured. And they wanted a robust instrument that was also sensitive, but also didn't have any downtime. And what we've what we've learned over the years, so this opportunity or this uh, instance, let's say, came about in 2019, and now we're four years later. And what we've seen is that even though there's high throughput with a very dirty matrix such or a challenging matrix such as milk, we're able to show that our, our system, the QSite, with its stay clean technology is very robust, very reliable, even when dealing with 20,000 samples a year. The, system, the, the customer only has to do about 30 minutes of maintenance a month, um, and they're able to run nonstop samples. And what I also want to mention also in, in since we don't have so much time, uh, we have 10 minutes, we also did a webinar um, last year with Technology Network where we talked about these complex matrices. And if you want more details on the hardware side or different application side, I would direct you to the, to the, the, um, the on-demand webinar that is available mm -hmm. on the internet. Perfect. And then finally, as we are almost out of time, how do you see the evolution of PFAS regulations? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's, I, I would say it's a tough question, but you know, what we hear from, let's say, attending different conferences or talking to different customers is one big worry, let's say from an EU perspective, so dealing with Europe, is that there's a proposal on a complete ban of PFAS. And if this comes about, this would be a big challenge, not only for labs in general, but I would say everyday life of people who would be mm -hmm. affected by this. So this is something that could come. It's not yet it's not yet, um, it hasn't yet been approved, but something that could come about. And then from, let's say, in a U.S. perspective, the EPA has actually come out with a recommendation for PFOA, PFOS, and we're not talking about PPT levels, so parts per trillion. We're actually going to the next level. We're going to parts per quadrillion. So it's getting really, really strict, and it just goes to show the importance of PFAS and the regulations necessary to to uh, analyze these compounds. And like I said, it's not only challenging for labs, but also manufacturers, because we also always have to stay up to date and get the most sensitivity out of our instruments. And mm -hmm. as I mentioned with the Q-Site and our Stay Clean technology, we're able to, to showcase this in an application area such as PFAS. So mm -hmm. great question, thank you. Perfect, well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Derek. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you also, Lucy. Thanks so much for joining us for another incredible episode and I hope to see you again very soon.